Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. My wife cheated on me and got pregnant, so I did this. My wife and I met in 2008 when we were both traveling. We met in Madrid and it was a very stereotypical meet cute. Our eyes met from across the bar and I approached her. We ended up going home together that night. We spent the next three days having sex and drinking and soaking up the sun and decided to keep in touch. She went home and I finished my travels and we began a year-long, long-distance relationship before I moved to be with her. Over the course of the long-distance relationship, she divulged to me that she had cheated on a previous boyfriend and felt bad about it, but felt his choice to dump her was over the top and that cheating wasn't always a silver bullet, especially since it was only a kiss. I realize now that she was sizing up my reaction and almost certainly cheating. This I can actually forgive and let go because duck long-distance relationships and it's in the distant past, but not what happened last week. I told her at the time it was a deal breaker, and if I caught her so much as flirting with another man, I would dump her. There are two absolute no-nos in a relationship, no violence and no cheating. A year after I moved, we got married, and a year later, she fell pregnant. I was overjoyed. She seemed distant and sad and anxious the first two months after finding out, and eventually, after I poked and prodded, she broke down and told me she had a one-night stand around the time of conception, and the kid might not be mine. I was on a plane back home two days later and didn't speak to her for a month. I ignored all her messages and calls, but eventually I caved and we talked. She said she was going to get an in-utero opportunity test, and if the baby wasn't mine, she would terminate, but that she wanted me to come back first. I went back and she got the test. I was in the room when she got the results. Not mine. I told her she was scheduling the appointment that day, or I was going to a divorce lawyer as soon as I left the hospital. She scheduled the appointment for a week later. The day of the appointment, I drove her and held her hand, as an abortion under any circumstances is a traumatic event for a woman. In the car, she broke down in tears and begged me to wait, chase my mind, try to make it work, anything but go through with it. I looked her dead in the eye and told her, do whatever you want, it's your body and your life, but I will not raise another man's child. That child will be the living embodiment of your betrayal and a daily reminder of what you did. I will not subject myself to that. Termination or divorce? Edit for detail. I wanted a divorce. As soon as she hesitated, I jumped right to divorce. I never tried to talk her into it. I advised against the abortion. She didn't want to keep the kid and lose the marriage. She wanted both. She told me directly that she would terminate if I left her regardless. She even told me before I flew back that even if the baby was mine and I divorced her, she would be getting a termination. She wanted specifically to keep that child and have me raise it with her, and unless I stayed, she was getting the abortion no matter what. That was not happening. She asked me if she had it, if I would give her another chance. I said yes. I love my wife. Ducking, sue me. I am not sorry I refused to play daddy to her infidelity spawn. She got the termination. There were complications and she was on bed rest for a month. For a while after, she was short with me. Unaffectionate and cold. We lost the spark. I tried. She didn't. She told me one night after a few drinks that she resented me for making her choose. I told her I was glad she got the abortion, as she deserved to suffer for what she'd done. I regretted saying this out loud immediately, even though that is exactly how I felt and still feel. One day I came home early from work and found her crying on the couch with a man next to her holding her. A man I'd met many times before. A man she worked with. The look on their faces told me everything I needed to know. He was the father. It wasn't a one-night stand. After I dragged him out of the house by his neck, she admitted they had a three-month affair. I will never know if this is the extent of the truth. To this day, I accept that and have stopped asking. I began divorce proceedings and immediately kicked her out of the house. She begged and cried and pleaded for months. And again, stupidly, I broke and took her back. I told her she had to quit her job and cut contact. She agreed and made the call there and then. We moved away from her city and bought a house in mine in the other end of the country. We went to marriage counseling and got better. Slowly but surely, we went from strength to strength. We now both had total transparency on all accounts and accepted that's the way it was. As time went on, I stopped looking on her phone. Things were great between us. Our bed life was great. We were both travel junkies and went on lots of trips and started talking about having kids. We tried for two years to conceive a child and it hadn't happened yet, but the practice is a lot of fun, so what the hell? This was the case for years. I was completely unguarded and my defenses were down when the most recent event happened. She had gotten slightly distant for a couple months but not so much that I was worried. I asked her about it, and she always made a point of being affectionate when it did, and assuring me it was all good. But her default 
when not being prompted, was to be quiet and seek out her own space. She was out drinking with her friends one night and I stayed home. I woke up at 4am and heard her voice downstairs. I went out and asked if that was her. No answer. She didn't hear me. I guessed pretty quickly that she was on the phone, and due to the time it was, her recent withdrawal, and her dubious relationship with loyalty, I decided to listen in. She was laughing and flirting and saying crap like, I miss you, and I love you too. I knew it was him. I was certain of it. Then she started talking about the hotel, how good the room service was, and when she could see him again. And I had heard enough. I charged downstairs like a bull, and she knew she had been caught. She started yelling and screaming and cursing at me, shouting that she'd been to a doctor here, and she told her that during the termination, there was some sort of problem. She was drunk and slurring her words and crying, but somewhere in the minutia of words like tear and scar tissue and permanent, I got it out of her that her uterus had been damaged and it was unlikely she could ever bring a baby to term. She'd found this out three months prior, right around when she started getting distant again. I grabbed the phone out of her hand. She tried to take it back. We clawed back and forth until I shoved her back on the couch and told her not to get back up until I told her to. I sat on a chair opposite her and went through every detail. A half dozen text messages from him asking when she was going to be leaving the bar and that he missed her voice and how much fun they'd had. Obviously, all the other messages had been deleted, but she hadn't had a chance to delete the ones from that night yet. I read the messages aloud and she stared at me with daggers in her eyes. I asked her over and over to explain herself and eventually she jumped up and started screaming again. She screamed that she'd taken a day off work and drove to meet him halfway, and they ducked in a hotel all day. She screamed that when she got the news from the doctor, she saw me as an enemy, and he was her ally. She screamed at me that she wasn't sorry and that I'd ruined her life. I yelled back that I was glad she got the abortion and if I could destroy him and take that away from her too, I would. She slapped me across the face. I slapped her back. Tough. It was open-handed, but proportionally much harder than she slept me. She fell back onto the couch and looked at me stunned and in disbelief as she held her face and began to sob. She reached for her phone and I snatched it away from her, before throwing it and smashing against the wall. I went up to my room and paced back and forth as she sat downstairs crying, and that's where we stayed until morning. When I went downstairs she was asleep. I woke her up and told her to get a shower and get out. That I'd already made an appointment with my lawyer to file for divorce, and she wasn't staying in the house while I was gone. She sobbed and begged me not to go through with it. She says it was drunk and didn't mean it. Said she only made up the story about meeting him to hurt me and that I was her one and only blah blah blah. She said she was sorry she hit me and didn't want an apology for me slapping her back, that she deserved it. I agreed she deserved it and told her it was good she wasn't waiting for an apology because she wouldn't be getting one. That was last week. This week, she's back living with her parents. She calls me every day. Ten times a day. She sends lengthy, weeby text messages that I don't read or reply to. As my lawyer says I shouldn't contact her unless to him. I'm going forward with a divorce. F my life. Edit. An important note I left out. That I have answered on numerous comments and it wasn't until someone pointed out I should have mentioned it in the original post. She stated that she had no interest in raising the baby alone. If I divorced her she was going through with it. She didn't want to keep the baby and I made her get rid of it. She wanted us both to keep it and be the father to the child of the man she cheated with. At this point, I still believe the pregnancy was due to a one-night stand she had a weekend away with the girls. She was not in a weekend with the girls.